welcome everyone. The event is now live. John, please take it away. Thanks, Victoria. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the second installment of our new editorial webinar series, Coffee Talk. Each hour-long information-packed episode curated by our editors will feature the insights and observations of an independent expert on a wide range of tech industry topics. Many thanks to the uh, underwriting sponsor of this episode, Ring Central. Without their support, this series would not be possible. And thanks to you for joining us. I'm John K. Waters, Editor-in-Chief of Application Development Trends and Pure AI, and Editor-at-Large for RedmondMag.com, both of which are in the Converge 360 group of 1105 Media, and I'll be your moderator. Today's topic is Unified Communications as a Service, or UCAS. What is it, and why should enterprises care? Our speaker is Mr. Howard M. Cohen, and we'll meet him momentarily. But before we get started, a bit of housekeeping. This episode is being recorded for later access. Keep an eye out for an email with a link to that recording. It'll be coming your way within the next few days. We'll have uh, some time at the end for some questions, so feel, please feel free to uh, type your questions into the Q&A box at any time. We'll do our best to get to all of them. Our sponsor, Ring Central, has provided some extra resources that can be found on the right-hand side of your screen. Be sure to check those out. And as a small thank you to all attendees who stick with us to the end, we'll be sending you a $5 gift certificate to Starbucks. Now let's meet our speaker. For this episode, we've called on technologist, content creator, and senior resultant Howard M. Cohen. In his 35 years in the IT industry, Howard has held senior executive positions in many of the top channel partner organizations, and he currently writes for and about IT and the IT channel. Howard is a sought-after speaker, an insightful observer of the technology landscape, and one of my very favorite presenters. Take it away, Howard. And John, you are one of my very favorite introducers because nobody <laughs> is more enthusiastic. Nobody is more enthusiastic. I mean that seriously. And by the way, folks, if you're looking at the screen, that's John right there on the right hand side of the screen. And um, <laughs> those of you who are old yep. enough to remember, that's Monty Hall. He hosted a program called Let's Make a Deal, which is still on the air with Drew Carey. Um, during that um, program, he offered uh, his contestants a choice of door number one, door number two, or door number three. Now, those of you who have attended any of my presentations before know that I love to start every presentation with a key word. And so today's key word is choice. Just as Monty gave his contestants a choice, uh, UCAS gives you a choice. And we're going to explore that choice today. First, let's think about how we communicate today. Okay, what you see on the screen right now is a flaming email. We've all received them. Somebody got really upset, really frustrated, really angry with us, and they just shot off an email, and oh, oh, oh angry, nasty, vicious, and what do we do? We fire one right back. You know, I, I mean, it's just a knee-jerk reaction. You get all upset by what you're reading, and you shoot the same thing back to that person, and nothing, nothing gets better. We all know that's not the efficient way or not a, an effective way to resolve the situation. You had other choices. For example, you could have called them and said, hey, bud, what's the matter? What, what, what's going on? Uh, and you could have had a good conversation about it. Maybe you could have resolved the problem. Uh, if you were living in the deep, deep past, you could send them a fax. Though I can't imagine any circumstance at any time when I would have, but it was certainly a choice. You could, of course, just text them if you just wanted to send them a quick note. Um, or, and this is, I know, crazy, especially after the era of COVID, but you could go visit them. You could go spend some time with them and say, look, I was really upset by your email and you know, how can I help resolve this situation between us? You know, maybe you get some results that way. Anyway, my point is you have channel choices. You can choose a variety of different ways to respond to an extreme message. <clears throat> so let's trace back to where all of this came from. 
in the beginning. Well, mediated communication really began with our friend Alexander Graham Bell and his telephone. Fortunately, I'm going to spare you all that history. We're not going that far back. Instead, I'm going to pick it up right around where we get the public branch exchange, or PBX. And with a PBX, you installed a big, big box somewhere in your premises, somewhere in your building, and you connected all the phones to that big, big box using wires that created a network in your building. And that box also connected to the local telephone company, through which it could reach out to other buildings that also had PBXs or not. Anybody who had a telephone could be reached simply by using the PBX to connect to the telephone service. Now, the people that you had working from home, if you did at that time have them, or people on the road could call in just the way any other caller would call in, but they wouldn't have very robust access to anything. They would just be calling in. And so PBX was somewhat limited. It was mainly for voice, although faxes were carried over it. And by the way, texting was carried over it as well. But that's for later. Then we built the internet. Now, the internet's not surrounding the, the globe like it does here. It's actually buried underneath the ground very, very deep, uh, but this just looked better. So uh, here we are, we have ourselves the internet. And on the internet, we now have an IP PBX, an internet protocol PBX, not only connected to the telephone service, but if you look in the middle of the screen, it's also connected to the internet. And some companies connect their own locations using MPLS or other communication lines. So now this IP PBX could not only conduct voice from place to place, but it could convey data from place to place and all the different forms of data that we use, which meant that anybody on the road or any remote users had the same kind of access that everybody else did. It was as if they were in the office, and that was great. So now we have an IP PBX. We still have big boxes in our buildings but we're all connected up and we're starting to do some really great stuff. Now, a, a big part of this whole arrangement was the public switched telephone network, the public network, PSTN. Uh, you may have heard some people refer to it as plain old telephone service. So if you've seen either of these acronyms, that's what they mean. Some people shorten it by saying telco, as you saw in the previous slides. Um, the public switch telephone network has been tying us all together for decades and decades, not quite all the way back to Alexander Graham Bell, but pretty far. Um, and it was the first major step on this road that we're talking about. And now the road continues. And we're talking about the road to unified communications as a service or UCAS. Um, the road to unified communications began really with something called the universal inbox. And this is going back to, oh, I'd say the late 1980s, early 1990s. Somebody came up with the universal inbox. Not only could you get your email in your inbox, that was easy, but you also got your faxes. Instead of them being sent to a fax machine and printed, they came into your inbox as a document. And you could read them, you could forward them for the first time. You could share them with others. It wasn't dead, it didn't end on a piece of paper. It was digital and could still be moved around. That was terrific. Then we saw the introduction of another service, voicemail. In its infancy, voicemail was a separate service completely outside of everything else. And you subscribe to it and People could call into it and, well, they could call you and it would be connected to the voicemail and you could check in and get your voicemails played back to you. Well, at a given point, they decided, wait, why, why have to dial in to get them to play them back? And those showed up in the universal inbox. 
This was a boon to users because now you didn't have to go checking place after place after place looking for inbound communications. You just went to one place, one universal place, a universal inbox, and it was terrific. More recently, we've also added transcribed voicemail where an artificial intelligence engine takes the voicemail recording and transcribes it into text. And that's in the email along with the recording shows up in your inbox. Fantastic. So the universal inbox was really the first step. Then we began the other steps. And I'm going to start kind of a step early. I'm sorry. I forgot to mention voice over internet protocol came out right after this time. And telephony came out at this time. There's bonding together the voice as a data type along with all the other data we were transmitting. And voice over internet protocol basically means voice over the internet. Okay, we have all of that. Now we begin to build our unified communications. This is actually a step before the first one everybody knows. Some people aren't aware that you have the ability to detect presence on unified communications. Uh, presence. So the idea was to reduce the amount of hunting people did looking for other people, calling them at one place. They're not there. Call at another place. They're not there. Call other people and ask if they know where they are. It was, it, it was tedious, and it still happens to this day, but we've hopefully reduced it by simply introducing these simple colored dots that you see next to everybody's names. And very simply, if the dot is green, it means they're available. If the dot is yellow, it means they're busy. They're actually communicating with somebody else. And if it's red, they're not available. They're away from their desk or away from their phone. They're just not available. Presence sounds like a great thing. However, there's one element that consistently fails, and that is the user, uh, the human being, the part between uh, the keyboard and the back of the chair, pebcat. Um, people tend to forget to send them, set themselves to away or available. And so you really can't trust those green or red dots. Yellow is usually pretty uh, uh, reliable because it's being handled automatically, usually, usually by your calendar. But presence has not really caught on universally as something that everybody has religion about. So presence is there not getting used as much as it should be. Presence, of course, is you know, most obviously available for texting. You know, most every texting application has presence on its um, contact screen. Now, originally, it was called instant messaging. Uh, some of us to this day still call it chat. Uh, but the bottom line is you're tapping away on a keyboard on your phone, your tablet, or even your PC. And the message goes to whoever you're sending it to. What's interesting about texting is that it was originally uh, put up on the MobyText system. MobyText was created by the Department of Defense. Uh, they had taken over ARPANET, which was the predecessor to Internet, and they called it DARPANET, clever. Um, since DARPANET was all IP, and they wanted to be able to text over the phone, they created MobyText. For those of you who were around uh, back on 9-11, 2001, I was on the island of Manhattan. I was in the city at that time, and everything shut down. You couldn't get anything on the Internet. Phone service was cut. Nothing was working except MobyText. If you had a BlackBerry, which was big that, at that time, you could communicate with other people. You could send texts to each other because the Department of Defense buried MobyText under so much concrete that it could withstand a nuclear blast. Uh, amazing, amazing network with an amazing history, but it still serves us to this day. And yes, texting does still come across your phone line, although it now can also be coming to you over IP. It begins with a click. You decide you're going to send a text. 
you click it on your phone or your tablet or whatever. It's quick. All you do is put in an address and send your message. One of the great things about texting was that the, nobody had to be there. You know, when you call somebody, you both have to be there to talk on the phone. But when you text somebody, they may not pick it up for a while. When they do, they can send you back a message, at which point you may be busy. So you reply after a while and back and forth just that way. It's a completely asynchronous mode of communication, making it very convenient for, for, for many, many people. And yes, as we've been talking about, it travels on the public switch telephone network. Next step is voice. And again, it begins with a click. You switch from text to voice. Let's say you're texting and the conversation is getting a little heated or it's getting a little in intricate or your thumbs are getting tired. You can click and switch right over to voice. And now you're talking to each other rather than texting to each other. One of the great things about voice over the internet is that you're not paying anybody for it. So initially, anybody else who was on your network, you could just call them and it would go across your network. It might go across the internet, um, but it would still be on your network and you could talk to other people. The beautiful thing is nowadays, if you have customers, suppliers, other people who are also using uh, a similar UCAS system, uh, you can talk to them for free. So, we're moving voice over to the internet rapidly, which is part of the reason that I predict that we won't have a public switch telephone network too much longer. I think it inevitably has to change or go away, but we'll see. Of course, if you're calling somebody who is only on the public switch telephone network, who only has a phone, oh, okay, your, your voice capability can instantly and invisibly connect to the public switch telephone network and make that connection for you. So you can really talk to anybody from UCAS at any time from anywhere. You also have voicemail with UCAS. Um, the recording is almost, in almost all cases sent to email in your universal inbox. Um, and of course it's transcribed so you have the text of the call, unless it was so badly garbled that the AI just couldn't do it. And your UCAS system offers you all of the services you've ever expected from any PBX you've ever used. Automatic call distribution, we'll get back to that in a moment. Uh, interactive voice um, response. So if there's nobody available, the system can answer the phone for you. And then when somebody becomes available, it can forward them. Uh, it sets up conferencing. It sets up all kinds of services, including the ones we're talking about here. Um, there's just far more utility in a UCAS system than you've ever seen in a phone system, including video. Again, you're on video, uh, you're on voice, and you're talking with somebody, and the conversation gets more personal and you want to have a more personal connection, uh, or you want to look in their eyes and see if they're telling you the truth. Well, you can have a one-on-one -on -one very easily. Just click on, vo on video, and now you're talking to the person on the other end, and you're seeing each other, and you're talking to each other. You can see their facial expressions. You can see their gestures. About the only thing you can't yet to do is you can't smell each other. And I'm sure the technology for that is being developed as we speak. Um, you can also do video conferencing. You can gather everybody in a room, and that room full of people can be connected to a group of other people who are all in different places. As you see on the, on the strip in, on the bottom of the screen there, there are multiple users who are all on their own computer, including the one who's speaking on the bigger screen. Um, they're all in different places, but this group happens to all be in the office. So they gather in a conference room. You've got great flexibility in conferencing, tremendous flexibility. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, some of that flexibility includes screen sharing. If you want to show everybody a document you've been working on, 
uh, or a presentation that you've been working on. Uh, you switch with a click, you turn on screen sharing, you can show them your presentations, you can show them charts and graphs and whatever else it is you want to show them. Well, let's say that you're showing them a contract and uh, it's a very, very, you know, very complex contract with highly specific clauses and you need everybody on the team to examine it and help you finalize it and make sure that it's correct. You simply click to simultaneous editing. Everybody who's on the call can then edit that document that's on the screen. And you'll see the names of the other people so you're not clobbering what they're editing with what you're editing. Uh, it's a great environment to edit in. It's simultaneous, not serial, meaning you're not passing the document along from person to person to person to person. You're simply all editing it. When you're done, it's done. And the same thing goes for um, approvals. Instead of passing it along from approver to approver to approver, you get all the approvers together on a quick video conference. They all look over the document. They make comments if they have them. Otherwise, they give you their approval and off you go. Another capability uh, available to you through Unified Communications um, is whiteboarding. We all love to whiteboard. We all love to draw diagrams of what's going on in the network and what could be done and how we should do it and alternatives and whatnot. Well, now, as you're drawing on the whiteboard, it's being reproduced on everybody's screens. The little right-hand corner, you see it being reproduced on a laptop. You see somebody standing there on a big screen. You see somebody standing there on another big screen doing the drawing. Uh, it's very flexible. Everybody can participate. Uh, whiteboarding is a tremendous, tremendous tool uh, for teams that need to design stuff. Then there's contact center. A contact center is really a, a, a whole other category of UCAS service. As a matter of fact, it's usually referred to as CCAS, uh, contact center as a service. Um, to, to, in, over the past few years with COVID, a lot of companies started to grow the size of their contact center so customers had somebody to call into and somebody who could reach out to customers to let them know about current specials or let them know about um, an outstanding bill or what have you. Um, of course, again, because of COVID, it was not conducive to bring everybody into the same room as we have here. And so contact centers became distributed. Um, with the right CCAS software, you can have people working from home, wherever they may be. And the system will simply distribute each call to the next available operator who will pick it up, handle it. On their screen, they'll have a pop of all the information they need to talk with this customer so that they talk knowledgeably and comfortably and, and you know, they, they seem familiar, um, which is very good for the customer. Um, and then when they're done, they become available again. They still have access to all the network resources so they can be forwarding messages. They can be texting with other departments to find out answers for the customer. All the things they could do in a contact center, they could do from home uh, and still be part of the contact center. So contact centers have become quite virtual. Um, and you can take advantage of this using contact center as a service. Meaning, again, you're not installing anything. You're simply subscribing all of your operators to your CCAS service. Okay, so I think we've done a fairly thorough job of defining what unified communications as a service is uh, and what it does uh, and some of the advantages too. Now let's get to the second half of the title why enterprises should care about UCAS. Why should you care? Why is this interesting to an enterprise? And, and the first thing I'll say is that there are really five, five C's that I'm going to use to describe the answer to that question. Cost, cloud value, connection, collaboration, and control. Okay, let's start off with cost. 
There are many ways in which UCAS reduces your overall operating costs. Some of them, you know, some of them are kind of obvious. Eliminating the voice network. You may not need to have any voice network in your building. You can conduct all of your traffic over your data network. So you're no longer maintaining a phone network in your building. If you're moving into a new space, you're not installing a phone network into your new building. But even going further, you're not buying a PBX, which is very expensive. You're not even buying hard telephone sets. Many customers who are moving to UCAS have everybody using their mobile phones or a soft phone running on their computer. So they dial on their computer and they're connected from their computer, and they're on a telephone call. As a matter of fact, I am speaking to you right now on a, a cell phone connected through the Internet so you can hear me. As we talked about before, every call that goes between you and other locations within your company or other people or anybody else using a UCAS system, uh, you're not paying the public switch telephone network. That's usually traveling across the internet. So that's a way in which costs are tremendously reduced. Then we get to CPE. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the acronym, it's one of the few I'll use today, but customer premises equipment. Uh, equipment that you install on your premises. Like the PBX is a good example. The phones are a good example. There's none of that. And since you've installed none of that, you're not maintaining any of that. You don't have to have a service contract to repair anything that breaks because there's nothing there, nothing there to break. And, of course, again, there's nothing to install. So you can simply subscribe all your users and get them going. More about that shortly. We've seen estimates that customers are saving over half a million dollars a year when they switched to UCADS from a PBX. And that's not atypical. Uh, There's tremendous savings available with no compromise in quality, by the way. Voice quality is tremendous, in some cases better than telephone voice. Cloud value. First and foremost, UCADS. I mean, think about it. What do we do more than anything else? We communicate. We talk. We write. Even when we don't communicate, if you ask a person a question and they look at you and don't answer, you know you're not going to like the answer. So they've communicated something to you. Um, we communicate all the time. And so it's natural that UCAS is becoming the core platform for all computing. Many different areas within IT are trying to become the one place you stay all the time. Your singular in interface to everything. This is not new. Applications like this have been coming out for 40 years, but now we're seeing them roll out in volume and there's a competition going on. And clearly there's a big desire on the part of users to have that single pane of glass, that single console from which they can get to anything they need to use. They stop thinking about the computing and just think about the work. And that's fantastic. So UCAS being the platform for the thing we do most is the natural platform to become this singular console. And as you look at feature sets, you'll see more and more of this integration of more and more applications into the UCAS platform, making it easier for users to do everything, which means that your training costs go down and your support costs go down. Simply put, you're integrating all the applications to one platform, making life much, much easier. The other thing is that access to all of this becomes location agnostic. What do I mean? In the old days, the people who were in the building, in the office, connected to the local area network, 
they got amazing throughput. Everything was really quick. The response on the screen was crap, you know, top. Um, they loved it. People who were across a wide area connection out there in the woolly world, well, it was a bit slower and kind of sluggish. And that all has changed. In this era of UCAS, it doesn't matter where you are. You can be connected to the internet from anywhere, including in the office. And you're going to get the same rapid response wherever you are. So it's a great equalizer, meaning that this is one less argument that somebody has for telling you, no, you can't work at home. You may find that you want people working at home uh, because they are more productive there. That's a whole other presentation. Um, the other thing is that all of the apps that we're talking about, all the apps that we've integrated, none of them are running locally on your machine. So you never have to update them on your machine. Um, the, 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 the service, the UCAS service itself, does all of the updating of all of its applications so that you always have the latest, greatest. You're not patching. You're not doing fixes. You're not updating and sitting for hours waiting for that to finish. You're simply getting those updates when they come out. So all the values of cloud are also present in UCAS. Then we get to connection. And the beautiful thing is that you can connect with anything. You can make a UCAS connection with a phone, a mobile phone, a smartphone, a soft phone on your computer, a, a tablet, a laptop, a desktop. Soon you'll be able to make calls from your refrigerator and your poster oven. It's not so much of a joke, actually. Um, all of these things are interfaced to UCAS and more. And as we grow out into the Internet of Things, you'll see more devices, some of them specialized, some of them general purpose. Um, and so you'll be connecting to each other and to all your applications through one interface. There's only one interface you need to get to everything. It also connects teams together. Not only do you connect with your team, but if you want to have a conference with a client, a customer, you can connect your team with their team and have everybody together on a unified conference call. Let's say you need to talk to a supplier about what you're going to need for a project you're doing for a customer. You can have a team-to-team -team conference with your suppliers. You can bring all three together if there's a reason to do so. There's really not a, whole, not a limit to what you can do bringing people together to communicate with each other. And there's no travel. Nobody is hopping on airplanes. Nobody is losing time to travel. And again, there is nothing to install. We're leveraging the internet to bring everybody together to collaborate and connect. I said collaborate, and there it is, collaboration. When you're collaborating, the entire team can see each other, hear each other, speak to each other, interact with each other, edit documents together simultaneously, and see each other's work as they go so that it's as if you're in the room. Very, very powerful. And as I mentioned before, the time to complete documents and the time to have them approved is slashed from days or weeks to hours or even minutes. Uh, it's just a huge productivity boost. Which brings us to the final C, Control. Uh, when you have the PBX, somebody had control of the PBX, and they managed the PBX, and put people on it, took people off it, made changes, what have you. Now, with UCAS, whoever is responsible for managing this entire network can manage everything from anywhere at any time on just about any device they have with them. Because management is a console into the UCAS service, the cloud-based UCAS service. It comes from the cloud, just like everything else in UCAS. So if the network manager who's responsible for UCAS happens to be on a trip to the other side of the world, doesn't matter, 
they connect to the internet and they're managing the system. Now, it sounds kind of odd to say ads moves and changes. They're not almost effortless, they don't exist. You, know, you may be adding users and you may be deleting users, but you're not really moving anything. If somebody's working with their mobile phone, they're moving it all the time. If they're on a soft phone, they can access that soft phone from any computer they can get their hands on. The only thing they do need to have are the proper credentials so that they can connect to the network. And UCAS is extremely secure. So you can expect multi-factor authentication. Uh, you can expect network access control, the device, as well as the person are authenticated. Um, so ads, moves, and changes really become kind of a thing of the past. And again, nothing to install. Um, it's just nothing to install. This brings you total agility and total scalability. In terms of scalability, you literally are just subscribing more users onto the service. And the service is adjusting as it needs to, to accommodate your user base. They may recommend subscription changes that save you money, but that's a wonderful thing. So, you know, it's easy to scale. In terms of agility, the thing I think people are most concerned about when it comes to a system like this is onboarding and offboarding, especially offboarding. Onboarding should be easy. It should be a great first experience that a new employee has with your company. And indeed, with UCAS, that's easy. Offboarding should happen instantaneously. We hear all too many horror stories about people who left the company but still had access to the network for a long time to come shouldn't happen. And with UCAS, it's easy to avoid because the person who is responsible for removing the person can get an automated indication from the HR system, and then they can immediately remove that person from the UCAS network. So again, total agility, total scalability. At the end of the day, what have we described? It's one of the few things that I feel comfortable referring to as a complete solution. Everything you need to conduct communications with others. That's a broad statement, but it's all there in UCAS. It's all available to you from wherever you may be, whenever you want, across any network, using any device. It's any, 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 any. That's flexible. So that's why enterprises should care about UCAS because it provides such a tremendous increase in productivity, such an amazing reduction in cost along with that improvement in productivity. Uh, that's an odd balance that you get those two things going in opposite directions like that. Usually one begets the other. Well, this is a complete solution that saves you money and increases productivity. So now we know what UCAS is, now we know why enterprises should care. And now, John, if you would, come on back and let me know if there are any questions. We do have a few, Howard. Thank you so much. That was fascinating. Um, uh, I want to remind everybody, uh, there's still plenty of time. Uh, type your questions into the Q&A box. Um, and be sure to check out those resources um, on the right-hand side of your screen provided by Ring Central. Um, let's, get to, let's start with this question here. Um, how do these UCAS applications help in a contact center? Don't they need different software? Well, they certainly do need more software. Um, some of the components are the same. But in a, in a contact center, yeah, you need screen pop capability. So you're managing a database and you need all kinds of metric systems so you can gauge how your operators are performing. Uh, there are now headsets that will tell you how much crosstalk there was, how much silent time there was, and you know, amazing things that a manager can use to manage their call operators. But the fundamental infrastructure required to build it is exactly the same. You're going across the internet. You're using a service that comes from the cloud. So you're not managing a box. You're not managing software. 
you're subscribing to a contact center as a service program. Um, so yeah, the software is provided and there is some additional software. In some cases, a lot, depending on how sophisticated uh, you want that contact center to be. Mm -hmm. uh, um, here's a question and it might be a little tangential, but it's what I was gonna ask myself. What's the difference between Zoom and Microsoft Teams? <laughs> you know, I actually get that question a lot. Um, so Zoom, like Raven Central, um, is a UCAS service. Um, it provides meeting capability, phone capability, uh, all the things that we've talked about today. Teams is a much more extensive product that in and of itself does not provide the UCAS services, most especially the connection to the public switch telephone network. Uh, Microsoft can connect you to that if you want them to. There are many other services that can connect you to that. As a matter of fact, Ring Central can connect you to that. Um, mm -hmm. But Teams is more responsible for managing information, for managing tasks, for storing documents, for sharing documents, and um, you know, like any other major Microsoft platform, they keep on slapping on more and more capability and making a behemoth out of it. So very, very different. Mm -hmm. um, okay, here's one. Wahid is wondering, uh, any thoughts um, on managed services versus self-managed? He says, I vote uh, for managed, but would like some additional insight. I, you know, my immediate reaction to the question is I think it depends on size. Um, mm -hmm. If you have a handful of people, it's very likely that you can manage the UCAS service yourself. Um, the interfaces, the consoles are you know, fairly straightforward. There's no real magic there. You're not dealing with internet protocol, ad, you know, IP addresses or SIP crunk addresses. You're not, that's abstracted from you. That's taken care of by the cloud service. You're really just putting new users on, taking users off, um, and making sure that nobody's doing anything odd on your network mm -hmm. for various reasons. When you start to get into volumes of people, yeah, I think you really do want maybe somebody from your network management department, um, but somebody responsible for managing and a backup to that person. Um, mm -hmm. I suspect that uh, in our in the next presentation, if you ask uh, asked her the uh, same question, um, she might have a better answer than I do. <laughs> so um, regard, are you, regarding managed services and self-managed, I, you yeah. nailed it. It really depends on size, but also your deployment type, right? Um, PBXs at, at a large multinational, uh, multi-location um, organization, you know, managed services, I see that very frequently just because it's like, hey, we want to outsource this. We want to make sure that we're not um, having headcount dedicated to monitoring, uh, setting up, enablement. Um, the other variable that I see where people uh, or organizations lean towards managed services are room deployments. So with UCAS, we've seen um, conference rooms get moved over to the cloud and you know uh, although it's significantly easier um, than an on-prem solution when you have 50 100 a thousand room deployments and each of those rooms have multiple components like a mic camera speaker um, controller and someone like let's say someone's cleaning and they get disconnected right um, that and making sure that you know all technology is operational. Um, I, I have seen a lot of organizations get a lot of peace of mind outsourcing that as managed services. Now, is it yep. possible to have have it self-managed? Absolutely. Way more accessible and doable. It just means that you're going to have to look at potential headcount, which some, you know, some organizations, they don't want to, they don't want to do that. See, I told um, you I should introduce our, our second speaker. Um, that's uh, Esther Yoon. Um, she's the heads of product marketing for Ring Central's you see portfolio. And I told you she'd have a better answer. There you go. 
No, no, we tag teamed on that one. Um, would you like me to continue to my my slide, or would are we taking any more well, questions? Do we have any more well, questions? Let's, let's, well, let me take a question here from uh, Michael. He's wondering how would this work if you already use enterprise content management, and uh, I think he means access management systems. Are there tools that allow you to seamlessly connect them together to ensure a single source of truth? Uh, either. Absolutely. You know, that Absolutely. One, I would defer to you on that one. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, and this is where we're getting into the nuances of which vendor is best for your organization, right? If you're a large organization mm -hmm. and, and you um, want to have a se single dashboard to manage your entire IT stack, what is important? Mm -hmm. Make sure that when you're looking at UCAS vendors that you're asking about the APIs that give you access to the data that your UCAS generates. Right. So, or, uh, you know, um, a lot of times you'll see UCAS vendors have their own analytics platform and, you know, you can take a look and see what they provide in, in you know, the admin dashboard. Um, but I've also, you know, in past lives, I've been in the UCAS industry for about a decade now um, from the hardware and software side. APIs are an enterprise's best friend. Um, and the quality of APIs is incredibly important. So I would say, you know, it's absolutely mm -hmm. possible. I've helped and seen organizations say, hey, I love your dashboard, but we have 200 software deployments in our 10,000, 50,000 person company, and we need one dashboard. Do you have high quality APIs that can, you know, pull this information into where we need it? And the answer should be yes. Um, and make sure that if mm -hmm. this is, absolutely needed. It's a part of your checklist as you evaluate vendors. You know, on, um, with that answer, I think Howard, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move on to Esther. Thank you, Howard, for a great uh, presentation. Um, I want to let people well, know you. that Esther, uh, it, thank you, pal. It's always a pleasure. Um, Howard, that was Yoon a phenomenal a presentation. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, so let me just, let me just very quickly, let me just, yeah, go let ahead. Me just very quickly, since I'm hopping off, let me just quickly thank the audience for your attention. Uh, really appreciate you coming. Love to hear your comments. And you're in really good hands because, as you can already see, Esther knows her stuff. Thank you, John. <laughs> uh, so, Esther, let me just give you a little intro. So, um, Esther Yoon is Heads of Product Marketing uh, for Ring Central's UC Portfolio. She is a unified communications as a service product expert with more than a decade of experience with industry leading solutions. Uh, I think it's safe to call her a UCAS maven. Uh, welcome to <laughs> Coffee Talk. Take it away. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, you know, I think what Howard shared was incredibly important. You know, a lot of times when you watch these webinars, they don't really go through the history of unified communications um, as a service, right? From UC to UCAS and the benefits there. And I wanted to take one layer, get it to one layer deeper, because there are so many vendors out there that you now have access to uh, for phone, messaging, video, webinars, contact center. Don't even get me started with like analytics and rooms, right? And we saw that, um, you know, in the past two years, there's what uh, Wall Street Journal is calling co Cove IT, COVID, right? It's this mishmash of people adopting all these med modern solutions and it lives within the same stack as their legacy technology. And this has become a pain point. So my um, my whole point is, and I, don't, I only have a couple minutes, but as you look at um, your UCAS vendors, you know, we talked about what is UCAS, right? It's, it's bringing unity across your communications. It's very, um, self-explanatory yet at in so many cases i see a lot of customers have the same pain points of disparate technology right so it's like hey we've we've adopted modern communications but now they're kind of disjointed or you know they went with a best of breed strategy without looking at okay how are my technology being woven together to actually make my teams more productive so you know i'm here with a psa if you're looking to make hybrid experiences simpler for your teams, because you know I know that all of you have implemented some sort of hybrid strategy. We've had to, right, with COVID. But look at connected experiences, meaning, you know, how is your phone connected to your video? How does your messaging elevate your telephony or your video experience? What does your webinar strategy look like, right? Webinar is just another, I like to call it video meetings on steroids, 
or with a little bit more control. Um, how is your contact center connected to unified communications? Um, and a, a great example is you get a customer call and in most cases, your support rep or your agent, they don't have all the answers. So the way a lot of these agents support providing a great customer service is working with their colleagues, working with people in your organization. So integrating contact center and looking at that holistically as part of your unified communication strategy is incredibly important. And what's the other benefit of connected experiences other than, well, I can switch between devices, I can level up my phone call to a video meeting, all of that. Well, you get holistic analytics. You get AI that looks at all these different endpoints you know, it's available on mobile, desktop, it's available on phone, video, messaging, and then composability. Like I mentioned, you have these connected experiences and oh, by the way, now you have access to the data with APIs. You can plug it into your systems. You have pre-built app integrations that can, you know, attach automatically your voicemail recordings, for example, to your Salesforce customer profile. You're, you're, um, not only creating and saving time between your calls, meetings, chats, but now you're call saving time and, and automating workstreams between the other applications your business depends on, right? And what do you get? You get, a, you get something that's greater than the sum of all parts. Um, and, I, and I wanna plug in RingCentral offers connected experiences across employee uh, experiences, customer experiences with a holistic approach to analytics and platform integrations. Um, but you know, this is a, a big PSA because I think it's a huge miss when, when people kind of just look at um, best of breed technology and don't really look at, okay, how should I deploy unified communications? So you know, what, what's the benefit to your enterprise? Well, you get all of your communications in one app, whether it's on mobile. So here's a look at phone. You get um, a really great connected experiences that can take you from things like phone to video meetings, right? So this is a perfect example of, I just switched a phone call to a video meeting. Once again, a great demonstration of a connected experience. Um, you can look at this one app that you send all your team messaging and chats in, and it has really great features such as managing tasks. And in a single place, you can also start a video meeting, make a phone call, send a fax. It's all in one place. Um, and then the other thing is, how does that environment connect into a conference room, right? Um, a conference room is basically exactly what we do on our desktop, but it's in a group with a group setting or with you know, enhanced privacy because you just don't want to, you know, um, you're in an open office floor plan and you need to, you need to take this conversation um, in a more quiet place or in a more private area. Um, and then looking at webinar, right? Uh, webinar is becoming more of a mainstream um, uh, solution that it, it's not just, it's just not limited to your, you know, your IT teams or that one marketing comms person. Uh, webinars are a great way to run team all hands. And so it needs to be accessible, it needs to be easy to learn. And in my opinion, it should be a part of your unified communication strategy um, on how you deploy it and how you enable your teams to connect however they want. And then, um, you know, second to last, how does it plug into all the apps that you depend on, right? Unified communication shouldn't be thought of unity within the context of a silo. It should be within the context of everywhere you need to communicate communicate and connect. So really make sure you're evaluating high quality integrations. Um, and then lastly, major lastly, look at the quality of analytics that are offered to you. With unified communications, when you have connected experiences and you can extract really great insights, not just for IT, but for everyone across your business, I mean, you will unlock new insights to help you run your business and manage hybrid teams. Um, I'm, I'm really amazed to say that one of the uh, benefits of UCAS is how granular, and this is not all vendors, by the way, but how granular, like let's say you're an IT uh, manager, you are, or IT admin, you wanna see what is causing interruption in this call. Is it my app? Is it my device? Is it network? Are they on a mobile device? Are they on Verizon? Are they on Comcast? Like you can drill down and help troubleshoot. On the flip side, we also offer, um, you can also get access to line of business insights. So, oh, I'm seeing a consistent spike of abandoned calls at 8 a.m. I wanna put more people there you know, in the morning shift. This is an SMB example, but you can also do it for BDRs. Well, we're seeing uh, a high number of, of calls coming in here. Um, 
or you know the quality of outbound call engagement is not you know not great we need to reevaluate training etc so you know that's that's kind of my spiel my big psa and make sure that you are looking at you know unified communications as a service um, through a, a lens with connected experiences so that you can extract value that's greater than the sum of all parts all right so i know i i zipped that's through amazing. that but i do have time for questions. That was great. Thank you, Hester. And I uh, want to remind everybody, you still can type in your questions. We've got, uh, looks like we've got five minutes for Q&A here at the end. Um, let me grab one. Here's one. Uh, how do you see UCAS changing the way we all communicate virtually? This is interesting because I think what we're going to see um, you know, a lot of times we think about scheduled meetings or team chat, mm -hmm. and we don't think about how those two are connected. And I'm gonna, I, I promise I'm gonna go somewhere that's, that's, you know, that's gonna make sense. But think about collaboration as a continuum. What we've seen in virtual settings is typically, oh, I have to schedule a meeting, or you just get kind of um, chatted and that's it. And there's really no, there's no median, right? And what I'm gonna, what I, see happening virtually is you're going to see more of a, a, a blur lines between how we collaborated in office and how we collaborated uh, just remotely. Um, think of mm -hmm. UCAS as it's now evolving to look at what happens before a meeting, during a meeting, and after a meeting, and how do you connect those mm -hmm. dots so that we can be as productive. Um, you're seeing more spontaneous collaboration happening virtually and the technology to be able to support that. Um, for example, when I'm in the office, I can just walk up to my IT desk and, and say, hey, I'm having issues, can you help me fix it, right? In-person interaction. Um, in the virtual world, we used to have to schedule something, send a note, hey, are you available now? And there were all these steps for you to get whatever you needed. Now imagine a live video room where I could just search. I'm, I'm a remote worker, I'm having issues. I could just search IT service desk and I can pop into a live video mm -hmm. chat room and get my answers resolved right then and there without having to go through all these steps. So, you know, the way we're changing virtually, I would say UCAS is helping bridge the gap between um, the experiences that we love and miss in person mm -hmm. and the gaps that we had as a remote participant. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Okay, we've got time for one more question. Um, what are some hidden surprises? I love this question. What are some hidden surprises that catch customers as a gotcha once they land on a UCAS vendor? Ooh, gotchas. Okay, two things. Make sure when you are looking at UCAS vendors, you do two things, and I already kind of mentioned it. One, look at the quality of integrations. Unified communications, if I talk to all my customers, they're like, I needed to plug into my Salesforce. I needed to plug into Zendesk and ServiceNow and all that. Every vendor has a different quality of how they integrate. So don't just look at a vendor and just be like, ooh, check, they integrate with Salesforce. Ooh, check, they integrate with HubSpot or whatever. Actually test it out. What do they do? Does the user interface look good? Most times I see people just say, oh, they do this, and then they move on to the next thing on their list. Looking at the quality of integrations that are important to your account, tremendously important. And then second, look at the quality of analytics. If you and your IT team, if your CEO had an audio issue, right, and he or she is a thousand miles away, will, do you feel confident that, the, that you will have analytics to help troubleshoot and resolve. Mm -hmm. And those are, that, that's that my big great. feedback. Yeah. <laughs> that is great advice. Um, that is great advice. So uh, we are actually out of time. So um, just thank you everyone for joining us for this second episode of uh, Coffee Talk. Many, many thanks to Howard M. Cohen, senior resultant, my favorite job title, for his awesome presentation, and Esther Yoon for joining us on this informative second episode and many, many thanks to Ring, uh, our sponsor, Ring Central, a leading provider of business cloud communications and contact center solutions designed to connect the modern mobile and distributed workforce via any mode on any device from any location. Keep an eye out for our next episode, everybody. And for your Starbucks gift card, it should arrive in the next couple of days. Thanks, and have a great day. 
Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.